the Hedgeless Horseman here. In this video I thought I'd talk a bit about grassroots exploration plays and touch on uh, Prosper Gold, New Legacy Gold and Labrador Gold. Uh, I know that New Legacy and Labrador has been requested. So first off uh, I did an article back in April, uh, yeah 12 12th of April 2021 this year uh, about three high octane, octane exploration stories which were Prosper Gold, Labrador Gold and New Legacy Gold uh, uh, I chose that title because Prosper Gold was going after a, a tier one uh, gold in till anomaly in uh, Ontario Labrador Gold was going after basically the extension of the Queensway project, which uh, not Foster Wheel but uh, Newfound Gold was drilling, and New Legacy Gold is uh, or was hunting a Carlin monster uh, not far from Barrick Gold's uh, giant gold rush and uh, what's it called? Pipeline deposit. So, so these are really, I mean, tier one exploration stories, either in terms of, <clears throat> you know, uh, uh, early stage quality, uh, quality signs, Prosper's big anomaly, Labrador uh, on strike from Queensway with uh, also gold in till and outcropping, outcropping high grade mineralization, uh, episodal system and new legacy gold again, I mean, uh, we, they already knew they had gold on the property and it was, you know, up to debate, but uh, looks like it, it is on strike from uh, Barrick's giant deposits. So again, just to reiterate, these were legit targets. And uh, I basically explained that uh, I, I think we will see a, uh, you know, drill speculation hype pick up in these three plays and I thought that uh, one way to play these which I mean like I basically concluded with is that this is how I think the optimal way is to play uh, grassroots exploration stories uh, versus also I mean in hindsight this proved up to be pretty good uh, to simply, you know, if you bought uh, Newfound Gold after the discovery, wh uh, basically when they listed, I think it listed around $1, uh, you know, it went up to $13, I think. So that's, you know, uh, let's say a 10 bagger, a lot of resources, uh, multi bagger, SK mining, multi bagger. Well, that they actually. SK Mining was more about that, I actually started ramping uh, before that and then they uh, made a discovery. Uh, anyway, uh, I showed this that okay, you, you have the like boring period, this is before any drill hype can kick off. And then you uh, typically see a ramp and that's depending on sent the ever important sentiment levels. And an important takeaway, which I, you know, try to highlight here is that the no discovery scenario, especially for, you know, a maiden drill campaign, uh, that's probably at least, I mean, on average, at least 95% chance of, you know, not hitting a, a discovery hole on the first tries. And this is one of the, this is probably the most or the biggest killer for people. Uh, and I mean, I've done that myself, uh, trying to get rich tomorrow, uh, putting too much money into a pre-discovery play or in hopes of getting that 10 bagger, while in reality, like we see all the time, there's no grassroots exploration, no discovery play that goes up tenfold after the first hole. So if, if this short is somewhat correct, you take a one in 20 chance of making, let's say 50 to 100% return. Uh, makes no sense when you think about it. Uh, still, we do it 
because again we want to get rich tomorrow uh, the idea of like trying to get 20 to 50 percent returns per year you know 12 months that's that's uh, almost unbearable to most people and uh, i mean i get colored by that as well unfortunately uh <laughs> unfortunately that's uh, the the optimal way to play these markets i mean if, if you could compound the 20 percent per year uh you're gonna be rich it's just a matter of time uh, while trying to compound that 100 percent within a week let's say uh, that's basically a sure way to get you know get poor uh so yeah let's go through these uh and again I'll, I'll just start off with uh, looking at sentiment again and how that ties into uh, how I think about grassroots exploration plays this is you know I mean I, I'm tr constantly trying to evolve and uh, try to figure out how the market thinks because you know your job again uh, like I said before is, is basically to front run news and changes in sentiment you, you can have an expectation of what news will come out but you can you you then also have to you know guesstimate basically what you think the, how, how you think the market will feel about said news so it's basically schrodinger's cat within schrodinger's cat because you can be right on news uh, but the market does not you know uh, give much credit to said news let's say uh, and that's also why i think the, having a longer term perspective uh, typically is the way to go because you will have swings in sentiment but in the long term the the value of the companies will more reflect the actual underlying value proposition but in the short to medium term anything can happen you can have a news release that doubles the implied value of the company and the market does nothing but within a year let's say uh, the market might start to reflect that and you have your double let, let's say uh, but most people just look at what the market does in the short term and then sell if they don't get the reaction they they were hoping for and while the patient investor sits there sits there sits there until the revaluation happens due to a, ch a shift in sentiment but anyway, so let's just look at uh, this chart I've shown a couple of times right now. Uh, this is uh, Bear Creek Mining, which I use as a sentiment proxy. And, and I've added some labels here, basically how, and we're gonna take a closer look at this. Uh, but this is basically my estimation that when over the last say, well, at least since, since the, let's say bull market began, when Bear Creek and overall, overall junior sentiment is around this area, uh, people primarily think about how much money they can make. In other words, greed is stronger than fear. Uh, while when it crosses around this level, perhaps, and, and I think it has, you know, has to do with momentum uh, as well. That okay uh, I think the market will uh, on average be greedier here uh, than let's say here because you have you, you still look at a you know a, in hindsight you still have a more negative sentiment let's say here but anyway I mean down here when things are cheap people are worried about how much more they can lose they're not thinking about how much they're gonna potentially gain uh, by just sitting basically and letting sentiment come back and up here especially here and here and here they're thinking about how much more money they can make so obviously this tends to you know uh, influence people in the way that uh, they're much more willing to take on risk here here and here and that goes for exploration place as well and much less likely to uh, take on risk down here especially down here uh, so let's look how that actually you know ties in so I, I've marked a, uh, I put a line here basically when you see it crosses uh, 
below this green line here. Let's first take a look at New Legacy. Uh, this is when I put out my article. Uh, and you can see here, for example, I think it was February 9. Uh, New Legacy put out a news release stating that they contracted five drill rigs. Okay, that's obviously, you know, very exciting. I mean, a number of rigs. Uh, the the uh, the drilling will soon start, and what does that mean? That means, I mean, uh, the the fuse is lit in terms of you know, impending drill results, or not impending, but I mean the fuse is lit that uh, in a few weeks or months we should have we should expect assay results, and that's of course going to bring in a lot of people who again, uh, you know, want to get rich tomorrow. And if we overlay the Bear Creek mining short here, uh, we can see that, okay, this was around this level here. So the juniors had already been correcting for quite some time, but the sentiment wasn't poor enough uh, that uh, people were too risk averse. Uh, and then uh, we get a news release, the drilling commenced. So, I mean, it might, might not look like much, uh, but if you okay, take from here, for example, until it peaked a few months later, that's still a 38% return. Uh, and and you took no, no drill assay risk during that period in time. So 39% revaluation basically uh, due to these news releases uh, which created excitement uh, and of course I mean not, nothing in terms of the value of the property or project at project etc had changed because they I mean we they didn't even have any results yet I mean not, uh, not even close to it but again that, that uh, creates hype because people are you know expecting an okay I mean, in a few weeks or whatever, uh, the short can go boom like that. Uh, but then you see that Bear Creek Mining and Junior sentiment just kept decreasing, decreasing. So when it topped here, uh, sentiment was uh, basically down here. So okay, then then you know finally broke the camels, you know, back sentiment wise, and uh, people were worrying about losing money because they had, I mean, the recent experience was that they were losing money in juniors. And of course, New Legacy is a junior. So that took its toll. So it's, it basically broke the drill hype speculation fever. Uh, and then we got, you know, first results and, uh, or we might have gotten results earlier. I don't know. Uh, anyway, that broke it and then uh, they didn't hit a bullseye on the first try. And again, I think a lot of people have expectations of like, you know, there's a 50-50% chance of them hitting a Corlin monster blind 500 meters deep. I think that's uh, way, too, uh, way, uh, way too much optimism. Uh, that's... Uh, that's typically not how it works they would be incredibly lucky but at the same time it doesn't say much in terms of i mean when you think about like quinton showed in a video here i mean it, it is literally like you know trying to find a needle in a haystack so just you know to get back to the case itself we're now down to 17 million in market cap i think at the at the peaks around here, I think uh, New Legacy was valued at like 60 to 80 million in market cap, just based on expected, you know, that the market or retail speculators uh, understood that, okay, if, if they would find a monster, I mean, a, a 5 to 10 million ounce Carlin monster here would probably be worth billions. So I mean, it it made it makes sense. Uh, maybe even that valuation was actu actually quite fair, but now the the market has given up all hope. Obviously, I mean, when you think about it, okay, what's reflected here? L let's say you know from a diluted per perspective, 
or accounting for delusion that success would be worth 500 million if they made a discovery. So 17 divided by five. So, so there's a 3.4% chance priced in, let's say, right now that they would find a, uh, a, a 5 million plus Carlin monster here. Is that accurate? That's hard to say. Uh, I, I don't think New Legacy is expensive right now and uh, I don't think that the you know project is dead like we're gonna listen to Quinton here about 500 meters hmm all right I am starting to wonder if we might not let me go out of cross-section mode uh initially we were thinking hey Serena is telling us things are getting warmer and then these holes said they were getting warmer you know, and the idea is, okay, let's go over here to Rift, and maybe we'll hit the mothership over here. I'm kind of thinking now, personally, that the mothership, the corridor of, of focus might shift, have to shift back into this area here. Now, a lot of these holes that you see, like these guys here, all these dudettes, are not anywhere near the target depth, okay? So there's very little drilling in that gap. Uh, when I turn this around, you can see... Uh, there's not hardly any drilling in that area, especially at the level of these uh, high-grade intercepts. Okay, but we do know there's at least one, say, red and one orange, according to the Barrick uh, color code in the, the map I showed earlier, uh, holes in, in this corridor. So, uh, you know what? This is exploration. Uh, we will take all the data once it comes back, all of the assays from these holes, and evaluate this thing in a holistic way and we'll start thinking about what we need to do like you know there's definitely gold here there's a definitely a system look at all this this anomalous gold these anomalies are, are real where's the mothership we'll work on it okay yeah so basically like it says i mean I, i'm not a geologist but i've spoken to you know uh, other geologists with Nevada experience uh, who basically that uh, you, you can't disregard the amount of smoke you see here I mean th these are you know probably 100 meter intercepts of anom anomalous gold so there's something driving I mean the, the fluids came from somewhere this is not background levels basically <laughs> so there's a lot of smoke here and this is obviously a big gap and these deposits tend to, I mean, the 10 million ounce uh, deposit Barry has, I mean, that, that's a pretty narrow ore body. And like Quinton stated, they haven't, you know, I mean, there could very well be something big here still. So I, I don't think, I mean, the, the story is for sure not over. I mean, there's, there's certainly not 100%, you know, 100% uh, certainty of there not being a deposit here. Uh, but the question is, of course, given the you know market right now, their cash position. I mean, are they able, let's say, or do they want to keep trying? That's that's the question, because right now it's down to 17 million. So if they announce that okay, we're you know. Uh, and they talk to you know potential backers or what I don't know again what the cash position is, but that they will actually you know start drilling here because they they you know realize and know that there there's still a you know certainly a chance of, of there being something here uh, again given all this you know all this smoke uh, then I would expect uh, yeah basically to to see a ramp again especially I mean if if the junior sector keeps on grinding down here or even even goes lower for a while uh, there's still gonna be i mean the main factor is gonna be people thinking about uh how much money they can lose so they won't be that interested in actually taking risk but if the market goes let's say something like this and sentiment turns up and they announce that yeah we'll start you know a new drill campaign etc uh, depending on dilution, etc., uh, I would expect a tick up in New Legacy. I own shares via private placement, and I haven't I haven't sold any, 
So I, I actually uh, didn't take my own advice uh, that I think people should take money off the table if we saw a rev revaluation uh, based on real hype, which we did. Uh, that comes with the territory. I mean, I, I, it wasn't you know too big of a position for me. And right now, since I'm the you know risk reward kind of person, I'm I'm not will, willing to walk away from this uh, before I know what you know. Uh, they're gonna do with it because either way, I mean this property at 17 million in the heart of the you know Cortez trend. Uh, I don't think you can say it's real expensive. I mean they have hit gold here in in the like avocado zone etc. So uh, again, uh, there is still potential here, so that should have some value. And right now we of course have a you know abysmal market sentiment where nobody is going to want to reflect that basically uh, but yeah I, I i have given up on the story i'm keen to see what will uh, i'm keen to see what will happen uh, and again if 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 they decide to or announce that i think we're actually yeah we're actually waiting for some holes as well i mean i i don't, I don't I'm not expecting too much, let's say, but if they if they get lucky, even if they find two meters of something, basically anything really to show in these last remaining holes that yes, there is indeed uh, uh, even more smoke here, then I think you know the case changes for the better again. So we're still expecting news uh, from that, if if I'm not mistaken. And again, uh, this is this has gotten too cheap for me to sell. Is basically what uh, what I'm saying because there there is still a chance that something uh, will come out of the remaining holes, and if if not, there's still you know so much ground here left to explore. Basically, that that I I could see them you know mustering up uh, a few more holes here and and then i think it you know the the drill speculation might kick off again and if we go into you know good sentiment uh, i'll just you know re reiterate the point that new legacy went up to 60 to 80 million on pre-assay uh real assay expectations basically so so you you have seen what sentiment can do uh with the valuation and now we're at abysmal sentiment levels so if the sentiment was up here new legacy would probably be trading at 60 million already so again i i'm i'm patient i'm waiting for that i'm not selling any shares now because i if there's anything i hate it's selling at 52 week lows i i pretty much never do that out of principle and that uh, typically has worked out well and again uh, it would be a completely different story if they tested all the potential and the, you know you know you knew the project was basically dead uh, that's not the case in my opinion uh, let's look at prosper gold which was the other stock i talked about uh, this is when i i think it was yeah this is when i put out the uh, article and uh, not too long after we get a news release so uh, mobilization of the drill rig which you know again lit the fuse and then shortly after that commencement of drilling and then even the addition of a second real drill rig later uh, obviously you know a good sign uh, shows you know confidence on the side of management because uh, prosper gold is very high insider ownership so i mean uh, they would be screwing themselves uh, basically because they're they're burning more cash with a second drill rig, drill rig. So that revaluation was like almost uh, yeah basically on par with New Legacy, 38 uh, percent. If one just rode the sentiment and could take you know a 38 percent up to a 38 percent profit pre assay risk. Uh, I mean, e e even if you took, you know, 20% pre-assay risk for not, you know, not taking on 
any risk basically i mean that that's superb if if you could do that you know now and then that's going to compound like crazy uh but then we see the same phenomena basically basically when juniors went down here in terms of sentiment or the bear creek proxy of sentiment that's around here yeah coincides with the top then people became risk averse and started to think about how much money they could lose because they were looking at a junior mining portfolio that overall was just you know going down on paper so if bear creek and sentiment instead of you know breaking through here or breaking this level if it would instead have turned up uh, i would have expected uh, prosper gold to uh, actually had even higher going into assay results because people would be uh, in the mentality of okay how much money can i make on juniors uh, yeah so junior sentiment people became risk averse started selling worrying about you know uh, not, not thinking about how much money they can make and then we finally got uh, the first assay results and as could pretty much be expected there were no you know they didn't hit a bullseye on the first tries and the stock got slammed so now we're down to 13 million in market cap uh, and the gold and till anomaly is still there and I think they're drilling right now so I mean, just look at how much the valuation changes and how much sentiment and expectations, you know, play a factor. Because I think Prosper was valued at, oh, well, I mean, close to 40 million uh, pre-assay. And, and if you, if, if this chart is, you know, somewhat correct, etc. Pre-assay with a, let's say 95 percent chance of not you know finding a bull sign the first try the the market was still willing to give prosper gold 40 million uh but like always it comes as a complete shock to the market that okay maybe it wasn't a 50 50 percent chance of drilling a bullseye and it got slammed even more and of course i mean sentiment had already you know broken down below this level in in juniors overall so it's going to be extra punished and now we're down to again 13.45 million market cap uh, and this is on the back of you know great bear having been sold recently for 1.9 million uh, billion uh, in ontario canada and that's also a you know high grade way in play and we know the bear creek uh, great bear actually stake ground very close to uh, adjoining Prosper Gold's Golden Corridor project, basically. So, if, despite that, you know, background of, of a $1.9 billion, billion dollar takeover, uh, the same company that was taken over has ground close to this. It's the same kind of, you know, play. It's in, it's in Ontario. It's in the, you know, Red Lake area. They're chasing high-grade veins and still... Uh, uh, the market cap is a fraction of what it was pre first assays uh, so again with stories like this uh, they're gonna keep drilling obviously and they'll need you know to get you know take in some money obviously I mean again the, the same with new legacy I mean the, the story is far from over you, you can't put in a few holes in, in that kind of anomaly and uh, and just assume they're going to hit the bullseye there might very well be a big system there and one sentiment turns up again and they you know m maybe they'll i mean the drilling now maybe they'll actually get lucky we don't know it's just that i i would not be keen on selling prosper gold right now because i sentiment alone is going to take when sentiment shifts they're going to take up all these juniors and people are going to start thinking about how can i you know find the next great bear again prosper gold would be an obvious candidate uh, because it shares many similarities including jurisdiction and type of uh, type of system they're looking for uh, 
so uh, yeah for, for uh, someone that's patient uh, given that the story is far from over I, I think you know I don't think it would it's gonna look bad buying around these levels and you know let's say if if one sticks around for a year I would be very surprised if not one uh, does not show a profit in Prosper Gold then we have Labrador Gold finally that's the third stock I was talking about uh, here we had a much much bigger ramp I think yeah 166 percent I actually think that uh, this was on the back of assay so I think actually pre-assay uh, returns were up to 90 percent without taking drill risk just, just people again being in the risk on mode because this is before the uh, the sentiment was completely broken but you can see the exact same phenomena here even after drill results uh, it ramped to 90 cent i think then we had drill results which were good but not spectacular but i put out a news release uh, an article here i remember commenting that to get this kind of you know news this early is incredible because again you're not expecting to hit a bullseye you should always the earlier it is in an exploration campaign you should put a lot more value on good to great news than you should put on poor news because it's simply such an anomaly to actually hit anything good that early because they have no idea how how you know how the system looks, where it goes, what dip it has, or whatever. So it's typically a sign that uh, the system is robust. Uh, and either way, I mean, if, if they get a good hit, they have already, you know, tagged on, to, you know, grabbed a cat by its tail, let's say. And, and then the market started figuring this out, and then it ramped even higher. But then we see here when it actually around. When the juniors and the sentiment proxy broke down here, people became, like in the other two stories, risk averse. Then we had, you know, people starting to worrying about, you know, they're looking back at this in their junior portfolio overall. And when it hit around this level, that took, really took a toll and people were looking at you know 95% of their juniors they were losing money on paper so they obviously started to become risk averse thinking about oh uh, how much more money can I lose and if you have one basically junior that's doing well they would of course start to expect the same thing happen to here so people start selling and it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy and now Labrador is down all the way here basically to levels if i'm not mistaken that's actually yeah pr uh, back to pre-discovery levels and and now we know they've hit you know uh, six, uh, 76 grams per ton over uh, 0.5 meters 128 44 over uh, i mean they've hit a lot of good high grade hits uh, at over you know 100 gram meters and still now you're paying for uh, paying the same price as before I mean it is Labrador gold cheap or expensive right now that's of course hard to say it's still 104 million I'm not selling here uh, uh, personally I mean I made a lot of money in on paper in Labrador gold at the peak it actually became a top five position now it's uh, decrease to less than a top five position since it's down what 60 more more yeah yeah down like 60 70 percent i guess uh but uh like i've said before I, i'm not selling any juniors down here just from just from sentiment alone and now we know they have a discovery i mean that that's uh, labrador gold has a discovery and uh, newcomb gold has been hitting all over the place and uh, this is still very early for Labrador Gold, so I would expect. I mean, they they they're doing a fifty thousand meter drill campaign. I think they have a ton of ton of cash actually. Maybe they have like 20, 
20 million at least still so it's like no no uh, no way i'm selling down here they, they if they just snags you know one good hit they already know there's high grade there one good hit sentiment turns uh, and uh, i can you know i, I would expect a multi bagger in labrador from here so uh, just to reiterate uh, I, i'm not selling any juniors down here again when sentiment turns which it will uh, uh, a lot of these uh, companies even the ones who have haven't hit the bullseye they're gonna go up at least a hundred percent from here on average uh, labrador gold already made a discovery drilling right like crazy so i mean uh, that's even better in terms of you know when sentiment picks up and they start to uh, revalue the already banked success and if they have a bit of more success yeah it could be really good so that's again a point of me being the hardest part for investors is to stick it out and wait they look at this and then you just project down uh, while i'm looking at what i think my the the junior i own what i think it will happen over the next one to two years and uh, uh, i expect to be to be seeing a return from here in prosper gold and labrador gold new legacy is a bit more iffy uh, because i don't know what the plans going forward will be i mean if they would walk away from the project uh, given how poor the sentiment is right now then i i you know i, I could still see it trading around here or actually you know perhaps going lower but if some of the results coming out shows even more promise or whatever or they you know announce yes we'll be drilling a few uh, deep lined holes again uh, then i would think new legacy would revalue from here especially when sentiment changes again as it always does uh, but th these are you know these are prosper and new legacy uh, pre-discovery exploration stories a lot of risk uh, uh, but you can't expect too much uh, from you know early stages of exploration efforts but the new legacy and prosper are not you know core holdings uh, they're way too risky to be core holdings actually labrador gold where you already know there's a discovery so there's a big chance that they will actually keep finding some high grades and and that's a, like a 70 63 percent haircut uh, so uh, i'm i'm more inclined to i mean the risk award is better in labrador gold than prosper and new legacy but i do think that when sentiment changes when we get back over this level and have some momentum again then i think it's time to by then i think playing drill hype will work again now currently drill hype does not work I, i'm not looking at any company out there who announces the start of drilling getting any traction at all because people are front running how much they think they could lose instead of uh, thinking about how much they could gain by you know a, a good asset let's say so it also that's one of these interesting facets of the junior mining sector that depending on sentiment levels you will have different tools basically that when junior sentiment is up here you can do the drill hype speculation play you can have the risk-free often risk-free arbitrage of buying a, a drill start in a in, uh, in a exciting uh, project and you could have like 40 percent returns without taking as a risk but at the same time if you want to front run that uh, now is the time one should probably get in because if you project prosper goals news releases going forward six months let's say i don't know what will come out of the current drilling and they might you know need to do a race but we know the sentiment will change so the question is okay when when juniors are up 200 percent let's say on average within two years what does one think the market cap of prosper gold will be when they're on their like you know phase two or phase three campaign i think it's going to be above 16 million and even with dilution i think it will be above let's say 20 million so again 
our job is to front run these tops here by buying these bottoms and stick it out uh, and be diversified right now it's I, I don't think you need to be in a concentrated portfolio uh, anyway I hope uh, some people got something out of that uh, consider me biased I own all three companies Prosper and Labrador Gold are uh, banner sponsors of my site so again consider me biased do your own due diligence Never put all your eggs in one basket. Anything could happen. And uh, yeah, and don't risk money you can't afford to lose. Thanks for listening.